Hey everybody, today I want to talk about a little bit different topic than I normally talk about. And I want to talk a little bit about suicide and what creates suicide and reduce a little bit of the stigma surrounding suicide because I think it's a really important topic and something that we don't often talk about, especially when we're talking about loneliness and struggle and relationships and isolation and betrayal and all of those things that for some people can lead them into a state that can move them towards suicidal ideation or death by suicide. I wanna point out that there are three things beyond love that actually reduce the risk of someone dying by suicide. And these are really important. And if you can bring these into people's lives at any moment in time, you are doing them the best service ever. Number one is meaning. People need to feel meaning. Number two is connection. Because when we feel isolated, when we feel alone, that can be a big life changer. In fact, suicide decreased during the pandemic, even though people were isolated. And one of the theories is that because everyone was isolated together. So it gave a sense of connection. And the third is contribution. When people feel like they're contributing to the world, when they're contributing to somebody else's lives, they are less likely to consider the death by, death by suicide. But first, let's run the show reel. <laughs> you can't too much. And one of the things that I've learned around suicide is that there are three main factors that actually increase people's chance of dying by suicide. Number one is a shift in belief. And this is one that people don't think about very often. So in other words, we believe that something cannot get better. Right? that things are hopeless, that there is no way out, that we've become a burden on someone else. And that shift in belief is one of the signs that someone may be at risk of dying by suicide. A second one is isolation. So if you know somebody that's been feeling isolated or that is, go is going through a period of isolation, maybe they are isolating by themselves and normally they're out and they're about and they're gregarious. Maybe they're isolated because they had a recent breakup. Maybe they're isolated because someone else in their family has died or they've moved to a new place or they've changed jobs and they're feeling separate from. There are a lot of things that can cause people to feel isolated, including the idea that nobody else understands what you're going through right now. And that sense of isolation prevents people from reaching out when they're struggling. For example, I remember one time when I was in the desert and I literally woke up this morning feeling like, what am I doing? Like I was traveling, I was loving my life. And one day I just woke up and thought, there's no point in me being here. And I literally thought nobody understands. Nobody cares. I had did not have the energy to reach out to seek help. And I just sat there and luckily I'm self-aware enough enough that at that moment, it wasn't so bad that I could literally observe myself going, wow, I wonder if this is what people who are ready to die by suicide feel like. And so I was observing myself and, and thinking of all these ways that life would be better if I wasn't around, right? And then I was like, okay, this is enough. I gotta really go. I really gotta really call somebody to get help. And I did. And sometimes that doesn't happen for people. And the stigma around suicide is that they were weak or they just were too, being too selfish, right? They weren't thinking about me. How could they do that when they have children? How could they do that when they have such a lovely life? How could they do that when they have a wife? When really sometimes the mind shifts in a way that there seems like no other option, right? And so this is the third um situation or the third thing that needs to be in place for someone to die by suicide is that there's a sudden change in belief, which I realized I just mentioned is the first. The third is extreme distress. Okay. So when someone's in extreme distress, when they're feeling isolated and there's a shift in belief, these are things that really can create the situation, right? That creates a state of mental illness, whether it's long-term or whether it's temporary, that can put people at risk of death by suicide. And so if you've lost someone to suicide before, you may be able to see some of these patterns in them, or maybe not. Some people are very, very good at hiding it, 
right? And sometimes things show up so quickly that one doesn't even know, right? So this happened to me again recently, for example, where I was just under an extreme amount of stress. And I just thought, why am I, why am I even bothering? What is the point in all of this? And I felt my belief. I started noticing my belief of I'm here to do good in this world to there is no point in me being here starting to shift, right? And I know for myself, that's a really quick and slippery slope. And once again, I have a lot of support, so I was able to reach out. But my request for you is to start noticing people around you when they're not being treated well, when they're feeling isolated, when they're going through an extreme situation, whether whether they seem to be hiding it well or not, right? When people are backing out of plans or not making plans, when they have a shift in how they're interacting with other people, reach out and just say, hey, I know you seem to be under some extreme distress lately and that you seem to be a little bit isolated. And so I want to reach out and make sure that you're okay and see how I can support you. Because small reach outs like that can really do a lot to save a life. So remember that you are loved, you are loving, and you are lovable. Namaste.